In this video, we're going to be looking at a few examples of sketching with the modulus function. So, let's look at this first one, y is equal to mod of x minus 3. So, in this case, what we need to think about is that all of those rules about putting x is 0 and y is 0 are meaning exactly the same thing. They still work. So, if we want to work out where this crosses the y-axis, that's when x is 0. So when x is 0, I get modulus of minus 3, which is just 3. So it goes through 0, 3. Now when y is 0, we're going to get 0 is equal to mod of x minus 3. Now the only way you can have the modulus of something being 0 is if what's inside is 0. And so x must be 3. And so it must go through 3 on the y-axis and touch 3 on the x-axis. And the curve would look like this. So that's y is equal to mod of x minus 3. And it should look like that because this would also be a translation of the vector 3, 0 of the original curve, or the original modulus graph rather, y is equal to mod x. Okay, so it translates it 3 to the right. So, let's look at the next one. y is equal to modulus of 2x plus 8. So we can use the similar techniques. When x is 0, we're going to get modulus of 8. So it goes through 8. And when y is 0, x would have to be minus 4. And so, it'll look like this touching minus 4 on the x-axis and going through 8 on the y-axis. It would have a steeper gradient to the first function because of that 2 in front of the x rather than just 1. Okay, So the lines will be steeper. Let's have a look at the next one. y is equal to mod of x plus 3 plus 2. Now we should start to see that we can use our graph transformations knowledge as well. Because this would be a translation by the vector minus 3, 2 of the original modulus graph. But we can also use our techniques from before. So when x is 0, we get modulus of 3 plus 2, so that's 5. And when um, y is 0 we get something interesting happen. So 0 is equal to x plus 3 modulus plus 2. So that must mean that in order for this to be 0, that the modulus of x plus 3 would have to be minus 2. But the modulus of x plus 3 has to be positive. It can't go negative. And so that means that it doesn't cross the x-axis. So, we must fall back on our understanding of the graph transformation. So, the point of 0, 0 on the original modulus graph has been translated by the vector minus 3, 2. So, minus 3, 2, so it would go here. And so, that must be what this graph looks like. Okay, So that's how we can incorporate our understanding of graph transformations and look at when x is 0 and when y is 0. So let's look at this last one. y is equal to 5 minus the modulus of x minus 6. So let's use our tried and trusted techniques. When x is 0, we get 5 take away the modulus of minus 6. So that's 5 take away 6, which is minus 1. Okay, so we know that the graph goes through minus 1 on the y-axis. Now, when y is 0, we get this equation. So we add the modulus of x minus 6 to both sides. What we're looking for here are ways of getting the modulus of x minus 6 to be 5. So for example, x could be um, 11, 
because 11 take away 6 is 5. So x could be 11. Or x could be 1. And the reason why x could be 1 is because um, if x is 1, you have 1 take away 6 is minus 5, and the modulus of minus 5 is 5. So these are two solutions. So we know that it goes through 1 on the x-axis and 11. OK. We can also use our graph transformations knowledge because this is a translation by the vector 6, 5, OK? And that, the fact that it's a minus outside the modulus sign means that the v is inverted. So there's a reflection going on as well. So 6, 5, 6, 5, something like this. OK? And that is our modulus graph sketched.